A lot of the way I play is based on uh, the interval of tenths. Now, you may think, well, in a scale, there's eight notes we have. If I play the, the scale of G major in position across the fretboard, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a one octave scale. Two octave scale would be. If we leave out every other note and play the, the first, third, fifth, eighth, this is an arpeggio. And we can do it again, the next octave. If we play the, the root note together and the third together, we get this. This is something, don't worry about what I'm playing here at the moment, just, just listen to the, the sound of it. If I play this scale in thirds, we hear this. That's a sound you're very familiar with. If we play thirds lower down, the further we go down, because of the vibration, we play thirds low down in a low octave. It sounds very stodgy, very... But if we take the third note and we play it an octave higher, that becomes a tenth. So that third note in the key of G is a B. If we play it an octave higher, the B it's here. So that becomes one, two, three. That's our third. Four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we carry on counting nine, ten. Now that interval, because we're giving some space there, which helps with the vibration rather than being here, which is dull, that has a really nice, wide, big sound to it. And where I really, really got this from was listening to piano players. You hear this a lot, a lot of jazz piano players, the left hand boogie woogie piano playing, and in jazz you hear that. that sound. So you know that sound. Now, this then acts as a kind of a scaffolding that we can build lots of things around with this. Now, I'm not, I'm not giving you kind of new things to learn. I'm not adding lots of things. You, you're, already, you're probably already playing this. So don't worry about it. It's not like a, a, a load of more stuff for you to learn. I'm actually just taking you back because what this is going to do, it's going to act like a key to open up your understanding of how, how chords work, how harmonies work. And playing in tense can make, make making music a lot easier. It kind of holds things together. If you can think, like, if you can think this way, not, not necessarily playing it all the time, but if you can think in intervals of tense, then it can open up all kinds of things because it takes you then away from this whole idea of playing block chords because it's a, it's a shape, it's a hand shape, it's a finger shape, and that's confining. So we're, by thinking in terms of intervals, the root note and the tenth, we're gonna, be, we're gonna break away from that. We're gonna be able to play music, and then we're gonna, I'm gonna do the same thing as well with other intervals for you. Um, very often when you play a chord that you want to make sound big, uh, if you make it a, a six string chord or a, or, or, or a five note chord, um, it can just sound kind of, it can sound heavy. But if you can space the intervals in the right way, like this way, taking the third, playing an octave higher so that it became, becomes a tenth, you've got that lovely space there. That sounds a lot bigger than it really is. It's only two notes. <laughs> How nice that sounds, and, and you can base a lot of things around that. So, um, using these kind of intervals, these we we sometimes call we call these uh, inversions. Sometimes, uh, so we invert the uh, 
the note to a different octave. And the way you do that can give a whole different texture to, um, to the way a chord sounds. You can be playing the same, what is essentially the same chord, but the way where you, where you place the intervals can give it a, a completely different feel and a different texture and, and a different sound. So I'm not giving you extra work here. If you're playing chords, you're already playing these things. I'm actually going to pare it right down. I'm taking it right back like to the skeleton, it, to this kind of scaffolding that um, you're going to work around. Once you've got that scaffolding set up, then you can start creating. But we need to do this, this first. And I'm going to do this first of all using the, uh, the we, can, we can basically say that the bottom three strings, the E, A and D, they're, they're going to be our bass strings. So I'm going to show you how to play tenths using the, uh, the sixth string, fifth string and, and fourth string as, uh, as anchors. And then once we've done that, I'm going to expand it a bit further and I'm going to make you play some other intervals on there. And after we've done tenths, we're then going to go on to, to sevenths. And once we start doing that, all, kind of, all kinds of music is going to start happening and you're going to start um, creating ideas of your own through this. You're going to get all these, rather than being stuck with all these shapes, all of those notes, you're going to get those to move around and, and see what they do. It's exciting stuff. Mm -hmm. 